the region. But first, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was on Capitol Hill today. He addressed a packed House chamber before a special joint meeting of Congress and moments before his uh, historic speech. Right after that, I sat down with him in Washington, and you're going to see that interview just moments from now. But first, let's take a look at some of the highlights from his speech from earlier today. In an unstable Middle East, Israel is the one anchor of stability. In a region of shifting alliances, Israel is America's unwavering ally. Israel has always been pro-American. Israel will always be pro-American. You don't need to do nation building in Israel. We're already built. You don't need to export democracy to Israel. We've already got it. And you don't need to send American troops to Israel. We defend ourselves. And today, in a cable exclusive interview, I asked the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, about that speech and much, much more. Let's take a look. Mr. Prime Minister, welcome back, sir. It's an honor to have you. Good to see you, Sean. I appreciate be you being back. here. Um, well, just prior to your arrival, the president gave a speech and talked about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It made a lot of news. And in the speech, he said, the U.S. believes the negotiations should result in two states with permanent Palestinian borders with Israel, Jordan, Egypt. And then he said the borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps. So that secure and recognized borders are established for both states. It caused a bit of an uproar. Well, uh, I was very happy to hear the president uh, add the other side of the coin. He said there will be no return to the June 4th, 1967 lines. And I agree with that, obviously, because I think those lines are, are indefensible. Israel would only be nine miles wide. That's kind of hard to defend, you know. That's half the width of the Washington Beltway. I was in the Capitol today. It's the width from the Capitol building to Bethesda. Uh, imagine... Short, short. Yeah, just imagine America compressed to half the Washington Beltway. It, we won't be able to defend ourselves. So. I said that we'd have to maintain a permanent Israeli presence along the Jordan River. And I think there's agreement between Israel and the United States that Israel must have defensible borders. Because in our part of the world, there's a simple truth. A peace you can't defend is a peace that will not hold. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, things changed pretty dramatically, though, in the course of the time, in the time that you've been here. Um, the president went on, uh, went into great detail in his AIPAC speech to clarify those remarks. Um, what did that mean to you when he clarified it? Well, you know, we talked about that in our conversation, too, and I was glad, uh, and, and in the lunch that we had, too. I, I think it was important because, uh, because it reassures uh, Israel that we'll have a, a defensible peace, a realistic peace. Uh, and I think also that the fact that he said that peace will only be negotiated between the parties. It's not going to be imposed by the U.N. The U.N. can decide anything. The U.N. can decide that uh, the sun revolves around the earth and that both are flat disks. They could actually do that. They passed these outrageous resolutions. So when the president said that's not going to happen and that's not going to succeed in the Security Council because they'll block it and because peace has to be negotiated. So a negotiated peace in which the Palestinians recognize, finally recognize the Jewish state and in which Israel has defensible boundaries, that's uh, that's a good thing. I, mean, so, I, I agree with that, obviously. So, as this is this week has evolved, how would you describe your relationship with President Obama? I, I think it's a very, very important and positive development and a positive relationship. We, we, you know, a lot. We have a lot of things that don't meet the eye. People don't see it. The press loves to take the differences we have, blow it up. You know, it's very attractive. But I've spent uh, seven meetings with the president now. That's a lot of hours. And the, we have so much more that we agree on than those areas that we disagree on. And, I, and there are things that people don't know. They don't know that Israeli-American security cooperation is at an all-time high. Now we've just, uh, I, I don't know if you know this, we had a revolutionary development now in military history. We've had the, the support of the United States for Israeli technology that developed an anti-missile system. And we've just intercepted in combat seven incoming rockets aimed at Israel's cities and they were they never got there we intercepted them in midair now that's partly a result 
of the American support for Israel that is taking place now. I appreciate that. And I, I think it's important with all the hoopla, it's important to say these things because there's so much that binds Israel and the United, and the United States together. And, and I think it needs to be said. So uh, could we say that you, there is a healthy understanding? Well, I watched the speech today. and. 29 standing ovations, uh, you got 10 j good jokes in, and over 50 moments of applause. Uh, by any estimation, um, a very, very warm welcome from the United States Congress, a joint session of Congress. Is it, would, would it be fair to say there's a healthy understanding with the White House and Congress understanding Israel's security needs? I, I think so, and I think also some basic principles. You know, you know. Palestinian Authority just embraced Hamas, which I, I think is, is a tragedy. Hamas talks about destroying Israel. You know, it just fired a missile deliberately into a, a rocket, into a yellow school bus. They, they, they killed a, you know, they killed a 16-year-old boy. Uh, it rockets our cities and our civilians. Uh, it, uh, it's keeping Gilad Chalid, our captive soldier, for five years without one visit from the Red Cross. It's a criminal organization committed to our destruction, saying that they have a holy uh, mandate to kill Jews everywhere. It's not a partner for peace. So the other thing that we agree on is that you can't negotiate with Hamas. You don't negotiate with people who want to kill you. I want, let me get into uh, and this. I, I think that's another area of agreement that I think is important. Let me, let me ask you specifically, because Hamas's charter not only calls for the destruction of Israel, but for the killing of Jews. You used a line in your speech today when we say never again, we mean never again. That's right. How do you go into negotiations with a group whose charter calls for your destruction now that they are in a unity agreement with Fatah, with the Palestinians? I don't. I will not. N neither would you. You'd never enter negotiations with a government backed by Al-Qaeda. And we won't go into a negotiation with a government backed by the Palestinian version of Al-Qaeda. And Hamas, by the way, just condemn the United States for killing bin Laden, whom they call a holy warrior. So this is ridiculous. Of course we can't do that. Uh, and I think there's agreement between the United States and Israel on this point. I don't think I know that. So I, I think that's important. Now, if, if they break up the deal, you know, they don't consummate the union, the, the, the deal phrase, then we can go back uh, and negotiate the peace. And you know what is required for the peace to, to be negotiated, other than Israel having the deal to be completed, uh, assuming they get rid of Hamas? It's not only mutual recognition uh, and security, it's, it's really a simple formulation that the Palestinian president has to say. You know, two years ago, I stood before my people mm -hmm. and I said six simple words. I said, and it wasn't easy for me, I said, I will recognize a Palestinian state. It wasn't easy for me because we're talking about parts of our homeland the land of Israel, you know, we have enormous attachment to it for 4,000 years. This is the land of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, everything. But I said it. So what President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority has to do is to do before his people what I did before my people. He has to stand up there and say six words. I will recognize the Jewish state. You know what, I'll give him a concession. He can do it in five. I recognize the Jewish state. He won't say it. Why not? If you want peace, say it. That's the only way that we'll know that the Palestinian people will know that it's over. And that's the only way that the, the people of Israel will know that we have a real peace partner. And that's what the world has to put forward. Tell Abbas to say the simple words, I will recognize the Jewish state.